I've been uh, training my whole life, training my whole life for this opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get that interim world title, and then you know, hopefully, we'll look at some some way bigger fights with some of the big guys. You know, I know Canelo's fighting Berlanga. Uh huh. Um, I think I think he's he's gonna win, and he might stop him. I don't I don't know. We'll see. Berlanga has that puncher's chance, but you know, after that fight, uh, I win convincingly on the 14th. Maybe we get Canelo. Um, Oh, any, okay. Any of the top guys in the in the division. Uh, I just I love to compete. I love the sport, mm -hmm. and I just want to show the world what I can do. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for clicking on today's video. I'm excited for our special guest today. He's he just flew in from Vegas. He lives here in Arizona, originally from Chicago. Special guest, pro fighter Trevor McCombie is in the house. My name's Jacob, and this is Ignite Fire. So Trevor, thank you for coming to the podcast. It's an honor to have you here in the house studio that we got going on here. Um, thank you for you know wanting to stop by so early in the morning, especially when you just got back in. You've been training in Vegas for this big fight, September the 14th with Kayla Plant. And uh, and I'm sure you've been away from your family for a little bit, right? Yep. Yeah. Honestly, since like February. Oh, dang. Uh, okay. On and off, back and forth, but... Yeah, it's it's been a little hard, but you know the sacrifice is definitely worth it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you. So being away from family and and because you have you have a uh, daughter or son. Yep, I have a five year old son and a one and a half year old daughter. So and you got the kids. Got another yeah. one on the way. And how how difficult is it uh, for them for you when you're when you're when you're gone like that? Man, it's 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 difficult. For yeah, sure. But you know, I'm I'm so grateful to have a a great wife that. You know, holds down the fort when I'm gone. And yeah, man. She's a, she's a gangster. Uh, you know, I get home and I'm like, man, how do you do it? You know, we got a new puppy, five year old, one and a half year old, just running around like <laughs> the one and a half year old's getting in all the drawers. And you know, meanwhile, <laughs> like, oh, she needs a diaper change. Oh, she needs to eat. And you know, it's a, it's a lot. So yeah, I think even for um, I have so much respect for stay at home moms. You know, oh they, yeah, they uh they do a lot and they they keep everything together. That's a, a full time job to be a stay at home mom. It, it's yeah. no joke, and uh, they really do hold down the fort. It's if you have a good wife, and this is something that I I know that is awesome in Proverbs. And you're working to talk a little bit about faith, and this is our table talk. So, um, there, there's a scripture that says if you if you found a good wife, you found and obtained favor from the Lord. So even though there was a time where I didn't think I had a good wife. No, nope. you know, I, I love you, hun. I love you. But uh, I would call those things that were not as though they were. I'm a very big name it and claim it guy, mm -hmm. as long as it's in the Bible. And I'd go to I'd go to Proverbs and I'd say, I'd read that scripture and I'd go in my private prayer time and say, Lord, I thank you for giving me a good wife. And because of that, I've received your favor. And as God was working on me and I was working on the scripture and the scripture was working on me. All of a sudden things started to change. So it's pretty awesome, uh, especially having faith. How important is it for you in your life right now and how uh, to have that faith in, in, in your, uh, on, on this path? It's everything to me. Yeah. Every, yeah. It's everything. Uh, you know, earlier in my career, um, you know, I found, I found, I found God in 2019. Okay. And, uh, so just yeah, a few was, years ago, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So about five years ago. So tell the story, man. You got to tell the story. Oh man. You know, I was just, I was really going through a lot in my twenties and, um, you know, I, I always thought I could do it on my own. Yeah. And it's, you know, all about me and whatever I do is what, what is the trajectory of my life? And, um, I, you know, turned, turned to, you know, just obviously a lot of sin and just uh, really wasn't doing well. And finally, you know, I, I kind of hit rock bottom and I was like, what yeah. am I, what am I going to do? That's really going to change my life. Uh, and it's, and I realized it wasn't what, I guess it was something that I had to choose, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I, I had to find Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's the, uh, 
the ultimate goal for or should be the ultimate goal for everyone yeah is finding that and um yeah so i got baptized 2019 uh I was doing real well, and I felt like the wheels kind of fell off even a little bit after that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think that's biblical. I don't know if you've read that at all, but once, obviously, once you've been, once you've chosen Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the the devil's going to come out and and he's <laughs> he's going to try to grab you back. <laughs> he goes, "I want you back, buddy." And you're like, "No, I I don't want to go back." Yeah. So, um, I feel like that kind of happened around that time. And, but man, I, I met my wife around that time and, uh, you know, we're equally yoked and she keeps me, keeps me accountable. And, you know, she, she serves, uh, at the, you know, the worship team over at the rock Peoria. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, she's actually involved with, uh, the women's group there as well. So That's she's, awesome. She's in leadership for the, the women's for, for, yeah, for women. So yeah, it's, uh, it's cool, man, but I always try to make that a non-negotiable. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm going to church every Sunday. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, and I think a lot of people perform better, do better in their life when they have a schedule. They have um, they have non-negotiables that they have to go do. Yeah. Without a schedule, without a routine, I feel like it's chaos in your life. Yeah, you know? man. Um, I definitely understand that. I mean, I grew up uh, in a broken home, didn't have any structure to my life, didn't have uh, any self-discipline, just was running amok, drugs, alcohol, got into the into the most. Uh, then when I was an adult, uh, it was drinking, partying, working, no schedule <laughs> whatsoever in my life. And I think just recently now, I started to really start to dial down on self-discipline, um, waking up early, going to the gym at 6.15, changing my diet, doing all that, uh, scheduling time with my wife, you know, mm -hmm. owning a business, trying to trying to put things in order. Um, and just in the last, you know, this beginning of this year, things have been changing so much that it's awesome. H have you always had a dis disciplined life? I'd say on and off. On yeah. and off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of my 20s was just chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was just chaos. Um, you know, and I'm I'm blessed that the Lord was looking over me that whole time. And mm -hmm. I think usually when you're at your darkest spot, that's that's when the Lord is actually like, yo, <laughs> let's let's get you out of this. You yeah. Know? And he's, he's rooting for you, and, you know, God is never against you. Um, so, yeah, I, that's how I live my life now. And I look at even just cleaning the bathroom keeping my house, you know, keeping the car clean, going cleaning the car. Yeah. That's all. It's honoring God. You know, you're, yeah. you, you really are honoring him in that. Heck yeah. Yeah. Just even the little things. Trevor, I, uh, just to get to know you a little bit more, um, would you mind sharing a little bit about your journey, uh, who you are, um, what inspired you to get into boxing? I know we t you, you talk a lot about the boxing career and industry with a lot of people, but maybe let's, uh, let's start there and then go into wherever, uh, God leads this conversation. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I started amateur boxing at seven years old. Um, we would drive, drive down to, uh, South side of Chicago to learn how to fight. Um, you know, a lot of the inner city kids and stuff like that. So man, it was so good, but it was a lot of driving. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of time, all that. Uh, but, yeah, I amassed an uh, amateur record of 138-11 and 11 with uh, seven national titles. Ended up turning pro at 17 after I won the under-19 national championships. I was supposed to go represent the United States in the Youth Olympics in Azerbaijan oh, dang. in 2010. Uh, but I got a call from my old manager, who, rest in peace, Cameron Duncan. Uh -huh. um, he called and... At the time, I was 17 years old, so I didn't really, you know, know what to say. I didn't even know who the guy was. Yeah. Meanwhile, this guy's like a legendary, legendary <laughs> manager in pro boxing. He goes, uh, have you ever thought about turning pro? And I remember my dad always telling me, yeah, somebody calls, you know. Yeah. You know, just send him my, send him my way. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of like, yeah, maybe. I'll give you my dad's number. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> and uh, he ended up calling my dad and... 
I remember my, uh, I remember Cameron saying, you know, he was, he was kind of rude and, uh, you know, this and that. And, um, I, I was just always just kind of programmed to, Hey, you know, yeah, just talk to my dad. So, um, they talked and I ended up signing with him, turned pro at, uh, at 17 years old and got specially approved by Nevada athletic commission. Okay. So has your, has your career been bumpy through throughout the years? I'd say, yeah, it had, had a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. yeah. I had, had a lot of huge wave and then, you know, it would kind of stop and, um, I wasn't really sure at the time what it was. Yeah. What, why is this happening? Why is, why did this bad thing happen to me? And, um, at the time I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have Christ, you know, at the, at the helm of, of my, of my life mm-hmm. at all. Um, so I think I wasn't ready for a lot of stuff. I wasn't ready for that. Even my early, early to mid 20, I wasn't ready for that. Oh, okay. I, wasn't, I, I wouldn't have been ready to get any sort of large amount of money or yeah. anything like that. I think I would have been very self-destructive. <laughs> I know I would have. <laughs> if you gave me money, I probably would not be alive <laughs> right now. So, yeah, so I look at it that way, and I, I thank God for not giving me that Yeah. early on. And now staying faithful, and, you know, I, I truly believe God blesses his faithful servants. Yeah, know? oh, yeah. What would you say is has been one of the most difficult things in your life, and how did you overcome it? Um. Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd say a lot of my twenties. Yeah, a lot of my twenties. Yeah, drinking and um, you know, just living that you know extremely sinful life. You know, mm-hmm. um, overeating, all of it. Yeah, <laughs> overeating, drinking, uh, partying. You know, just trying to get you know get that <laughs> that uh, instant gratification dopamine fix. Oh yeah, you know. Um, so that was, that was really big for me to crawl out of that hole and Mm -hmm. get really be, be the man that God made, made me. Yeah. Heck yeah. Potential. So, uh, when I was scrolling on YouTube and I, I I put in your name and I'm like, okay, let let, let me, let me check out a couple of, of your videos. Um, I saw some really cool snippets of, uh, your, uh, your, um, 28, no. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw all these little clips. I'm like, dang, dude, you're, you're legit. Like, this is cool. And, and then the last video I saw was with you and Caleb and you guys stood face to face and it looked a little intense. It, it, <laughs> I have to say, but, uh, uh, you excited for this fight that's coming up? Oh, I'm very excited. i finally have this big, you know, big break. Like, okay, yeah. now it's, it's time to show the world who I really am. And, you know, people uh, can think whatever they want. But yeah. at the end of the day, man, September 14th, we're going to find out. Heck yeah. yeah. There's a lot of haters out there. <laughs> so when you came out on stage and you were standing there in front of Caleb, I noticed, man, you had the Make America Great Again hat. I think that there's a lot of athletes just even normal people uh that need to come out and just show really what they what they support i feel like people that um kind of shy away from politics and you know don't really care this is this is the future of our country yeah man and we decide the trajectory where it's going to go we need to get out and vote and i know a lot of people that are struggling right now yeah oh yeah gas food housing i mean you name it everything i i just i really i really want to change the trajectory of this country and and <laughs> right now we're, we're going down that wrong road <laughs> i know I've, I've, I've i'm always encouraging people on this channel to vote to go out i've been a big trump supporter for a long time mexicans for trump let's build the wall make america great again let's go so i've been i've been uh, talking a lot about that and and uh we were at the the last rally here in arizona when trump was here and rfk came out absolutely phenomenal time uh, and I remember I was with my mother and father-in-law 
And they've kind of been, you know, worried for the state of the nation, where things are going. And when we left, my mother-in-law turns over and looks at me and says, for the first time, I feel hope for the future of the nation. And I think that's really what's happening with Trump, whether people like him or not. He really did do something amazing his first four years. I know my business thrived better than it's ever been um, during his administration. And the last four years have not. <laughs> and and there is a difference between... Go figure, right? Yeah, this last four and the in the four that was before. Um, and uh, and if Biden or, or Kamala are talking, you know, Kamala's talking about changing things and what she's going to do, but why hasn't she done it in the last four years? You know, that's my question. And it's interesting to see how common sense has just diminished on social media. Now, I don't believe that social media is a is a representation of all of American America because I think it's it's tainted and it's it's bias. Um, I I, I uh, posted a video or not a video a picture of you know Vice President Wal uh, uh, elect uh, Waltz. Mm -hmm. Some of his family members are for Trump, and they. <laughs> They had the shirts on. I was like, is that an AI picture? It's not. It's That's what I thought. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> Dude, I posted that picture on Facebook and it gets flagged for misinformation. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? How is this? And then it and then I, I go to find the details and it says that the picture didn't represent all of his entire family. Oh, so gosh. therefore. It's misinformation because it's not a, a full representation of his family. Spare me. And uh, yeah, man, I, I was just like, it's in, it's in interesting how social media, like a lot of the big platforms, are bought and paid for by the Democratic Party. It's crazy. It's wild. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't know, you don't know what accounts are bots <laughs> because I mean, just even AI now, it's getting wild where. You know, you can't decipher truth from reality. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's it, even that is pretty scary. Oh yeah. And I know even Elon. Elon talks about it. You know, he's he's making headway with AI and everything. And even even he says, you know, it's 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 a it's a dangerous road to really go down. But he's oh, yeah. willing to go down that road. So. Yeah, and AI definitely is the the future. Um, I know I use AI for our social media <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, different stuff like that, but um, it is a whole nother frontier of how things can be manipulated. We're turning into sure. like cyborgs, you know, or we got a, I don't know if that's the right word, cyborg or yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah cyborg. Uh, we, you know, got our phones, you know, you, <laughs> you don't know something. And right now, you know, you're asking me, I'll, Go look it up, and I'll yeah. tell you. Um, so yeah, we think we're becoming smarter in that sense, mm -hmm. but also like dumber in the sense where, <laughs> <laughs> you know, your your teachers used to tell you you're not going to have a calculator walking around with you all the time, and then we do, and now we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, overall, I think we're getting smarter, but in a way, we're kind of declining as well. Like. I don't know. I noticed that even with our education system, like, you know, yeah, it's man, kind of going downhill. It's sad, dude. Um, talking about education, so that's one of the things that my cousin is super, super um, uh, involved with, is because she's noticing that there is a huge problem in the Peoria school district and the different districts, and how they have like transgender stuff they're opening up the they want to they want to allow guys to use the women's bathrooms and and uh, girls use the men's and then waltz was talking about putting tampons in the guys restrooms and i'm like that doesn't biologically doesn't make sense unless there's women in there you know mm -hmm. and and it's just all these lines are getting screwed up and i know we had talked a little bit about the participation trophies like how i i i don't i've never understood participation trophies like you just get a trophy for showing up yeah it's great mm -hmm. that you showed up but where's the competition you know what what's there to make you better and to strive for something better and i'm all about like healthy competition that's what i felt made our nation so great was the 
competitiveness. Yeah. You know, people, people were very competitive. You know, you look at, you know, the two, you know, 2000 or later, the Olympics. Yeah. You know, we had a lot of pride in our nation and we were very competitive. Like, no, our, our guy's going to win. Yeah. That's our guy. That's, that's our American guy. Let's get it. But I don't know. It's weird how the shift, and I, I think a lot of it has to attribute to just the constant dopamine fixes. You know, you're uh, scrolling on TikTok and you, you want to be constantly stim- stimulated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Constantly. I noticed, I was talking to my brother about that. You know, you're sitting there scrolling on TikTok <laughs> and in the background you got a movie going and, you know, you're texting people and on, and on TikTok and watching a movie and it's like, Wait, wait, wait. Why, why are you so stimulated? Why do you need to be that stimulated right now? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I feel like people are kind of getting in a trance. Yeah. In a trance where, you know, you go to work, come home, and that's it. Talking about talking about that, we went out to uh, Texas Roadhouse, one of our one of our favorite steakhouses. Oh, and, so good. Oh, man. I, I was actually good this last time. I, I just had a steak, some vegetables, no bread. Want, want, want. Oh, so good i know and i couldn't do it i was like dang it i was that, like that cinnamon butter dude oh man just melts on the bread Ooh. so delicious uh but i look i look over and there's a family just looks completely miserable <laughs> sitting down and then you look at another table and every single person at the table has their phones and they're just on it yeah. cut non-stop and it's like what happened to the human interaction what happened to conversations and and that's stuff that we need. And I think when the shutdowns happen, I won't say why, but when the shutdowns happen, yep. I think it really had a negative effect on a lot of people because then they stopped uh, their they stopped doing their human nature. The their not just their nature, but what we need is that human interaction and conversation and touch. And uh, it's kind of sad, you know, it's, how how things are. It's very sad. You know, I call me a conspiracy theorist, but I, I think <laughs> I think it was a way to kind of demoralize the nation a little bit. Or oh, a, a yeah. lot of it. A lot of it. It's very demoralizing, and more people now are working from home, and yeah. I think that's causing a lot of issues. You know, I know people, you know, a few people that work at home, and they don't really leave their house anymore. Yeah, that's... They just, you know, chilling in their house, and... Mm-hmm. I don't think that's healthy at all. No. We need the sun. We need to be outside. Um, RFK talked about that. Yeah. Just about our, our um, I guess what you call it, our, our, like the woods and just nature itself. That's God's creation. Mm-hmm. We're meant to be out there. Yeah. We're meant to, you know, soak that stuff in. This is God's wonderful creation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, a lot of these people now, they're just chilling inside, not really not really doing too much. And I think that's, that's just can get very depressing. Oh yeah. So to switch it up, um, let me ask you another question. How, how long have you been married? I've been married about two and a half years. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. How'd you meet your wife? Uh, I met her at a boxing gym actually. Okay. Uh, I was, I was training people and, uh, yeah, it started off, you know, she, <laughs> she wanted to get, get some personal training, I guess, backing up. Uh, after a class, um, I I said we have a special for for personal training, uh, and she told me that her eyes just lit up. And I mean, <laughs> I was I was hoping that she was going to sign up, you know, to do some classes. Uh, yeah. And she went up to the front and goes, "Hey, there's a special for personal training right now." And they go, <laughs> "I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> so, but she ended up coming, talking to them, talking to me, and then. Uh, we started training, you know, started very professional and yeah. Uh, yeah, eventually I, you know, asked her out and um now we're here. Now we have Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah now we got That would have been us. a little awkward if uh she didn't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, big time. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so uh man, just around that time in my life too, it was it was kind of rough and I Yeah. I was yeah, I'm just I'm uh, so blessed that I was able to meet her in that time. Yeah. Um, especially just meeting somebody that has that, just loves God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow, okay. 
So she be, has she been a believer? The was she a believer the whole time? Yep. Oh damn. Yeah, her whole okay. life. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then her family is very much. You know, my in laws are very much involved in the church, and um, just realize how how important it is to to serve the Lord. And yeah, yeah, it's it's great. In the two years that you guys have been together, because we do, I uh, so I do uh, marriage panels. We we do uh, a lot of stuff with marriage. We were doing marriage uh, um, conferences and stuff like that. What have you What have you seen in the married life that has contributed to your guys' relationship? Because I know being a professional boxer, being gone all the time, um, all that has to have some impact on on family life, right? So what would you say uh, a dynamics in your life that has been something that's contributed to your marriage and making it stronger? I'd say we communicate all the time. Uh, yeah. All the time. FaceTime... Uh, you know, we'll obviously text throughout the day, but we're always FaceTiming each other. Yeah. You know, how are you doing? Like, you know, just, just really making sure that we're both doing okay. And yeah. Um, you know, I think something, I guess, kind of backing up to what we were talking about, just having conversation and stuff. That's something that we want to start doing as a family is just sitting down on the uh, table Yeah. and, you know, turn that TV off. You know, we're not watching YouTube or anything yeah. like that where put our phones away and we can all talk. And I think, I think that is going to be really, really key just even for the kids. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're, you know, learning how to socialize and, you know, have that, uh, that sit down with your family. I think that that's super important. My wife is big on sitting down at the dinner table and putting everything down. And I wasn't raised like that. You know, I was raised like, fend for yourself. If there's food, you get it, you know, when it's there. Yeah, <laughs> grab it and go watch a movie. Yeah, yeah. We'd sit down watching America's Most Funniest Home Videos or whatever. And don't and get me wrong. I love <laughs> my wife and I, I. You know, we'll sit down and if we don't have our, our food there or food isn't ready, <laughs> we're going to start a, a movie. Oh, I just can't start the movie. I'm not in Zen. Oh, okay. I need yeah. my food. Yeah, Eat my food and watch a movie. <laughs> Being in Zen, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's so important to get out of your comfort zone, really, with a lot of things. Yeah, that's that's our comfort zone, and I want to get out of that and start, you know, doing the doing the family uh, table dinner thing. And um, yeah, I think there's just a lot of things. Uh, just even ice bath. You know, I do an ice bath in the mornings usually. Mm-hmm. That's something you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I mean, in my mind, I know it's best for me. Yeah, because I have a I have a way better day when I do it. Um, but that initial like, oh man, this is gonna stink. Like, yeah, all right, I gotta hop in here. Um, I think us as human beings, we just we really should do things we don't want to do. Yeah, just to uh, build that resilience and just. Uh, yeah, change it up. Doing the hard stuff. Doing the uh, hard stuff. What, what's what's that quote that it, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard, but if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. Um, that's definitely been true in my life. Uh, one thing that I didn't want to do was uh, marriage counseling, mm. but my wife and I could not seem to communicate. And I think communication is one of the biggest things that we we can learn in life, especially in a relationship. And I used to think she was the problem. And then we go to counseling, and then eventually I realize, wait a minute, I think I'm the problem. <laughs> and you know, one a, a hard pill that I had to swallow in counseling was uh, our counselor kept talking to me, and I'm like, wait a minute, there's my wife is here, you know? Picking on me. Why why do you keep talking to me? And he just every session for it seemed like week after week after week, he just kept looking at he wouldn't even acknowledge my wife and i'm like there's two participating in this relationship right mm -hmm. finally i just got mad at him and i said look man we're paying you for couples you know uh counseling all you're doing is talking to me and if we need to set up a second you know uh session for her then and it's just her that's great you and i can sit down by, but but this is a couple's thing 
you've just addressed me. And I think he was waiting for that moment for me to say something like that. And he looked at me and he's like, who uh, do you, are you or are you not the man of your house? And I'm like, what the? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'm the man of my house. He goes, are you or are you not the spiritual covering over your wife? And I'm like, and then he's like, are you or are you not? And so he starts, he starts drilling me with all these questions. And he says, your wife is your mirror. And she is the way she is because you are the way you are. Mm. And he says, and when you man up and decide to change, he said, she will change. Mm. And uh, it was like a wet dish rag to the face. It was a right hook. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it made me realize, wait a minute, I do have more influence and authority and, and, and than, I, than I realize. And so many men don't have the confidence don't have the understanding of who they are, their their authority. Um, and if a man just stands up and is a man and leads, his family will follow no matter what. 100%. And it just takes that that understanding of of uh, of who they are, you know. And that's a that's a huge thing I think in this world right now is it's so much easier to say, "Oh, I'm a victim." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it really, you know, comes to anything, even in the marriage, it's so much easier to be like, "Well, it's not me. Yeah. It's it's her. <laughs> she's she's badgering me. She's doing this. She's doing that." But yeah, let's take a step back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and yeah, you go back, go go back to scripture. Hey, you are the leader, bro. <laughs> yeah, you are the leader. So don't don't sit there and cry and you know point the finger at ain't nobody yeah it's on you man like are you are you truly being the best person that you can be yeah are you being the le- best leader you can be in your house yes and uh yeah it's crazy you know this victim mentality oh, though man, I can't it's stand and it. it and it's easy trust me yeah like I've, I've been there and i'm sure i'll do it again someday yeah yeah and you yeah. gotta take a step back and be like whoa, whoa, whoa. what's really happening here <laughs> when you get confronted with the truth it hurts you know yeah, now don't get me wrong. I think that <laughs> there are certain circumstances for sure. You know, you're, let's say you're doing all the right things. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, then at that point, obviously it's a different conversation. But I think it always should be the first thing is, hey, what what am I, what have I been doing lately? Mm-hmm. What have I not been doing? Yeah. And, you know, put the blame on yourself. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, like we've all made decisions based on self that later places us in a position to be hurt. I used to blame my mom, used to blame my dad for not for doing things, for destroying our lives, like all this stuff. And now I'm like, I love my mom. I love my dad. I won't say one negative thing about them because I'm like, hey, they were they had their own traumas and demons that they had to face. Mm-hmm. And we are all responsible for our own lives. And what am I going to do today? You know, am I going to keep blaming them while I'm 70 years old for why my life turned out like a piece of crap? You know, no, (laughs) believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there like that. I know. And we, uh, we need to break. It's our responsibility to break those chains. Yeah. If this happened with my parents, Hey, okay. I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put that onto my kids. And yeah. then the, the cycle just continues and it keeps going down the road. Yeah. You know, they, they talk about white privilege, black privilege. They talk about Asian privilege and I talked about how they're good at math. <laughs> I talked about uh, <laughs> Mexican privilege and whatever race you are. Yeah. But I believe the moment that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the moment that his spirit comes and lives in you and now you have received more privilege than any race Mm. any any person uh any anywhere and now you have an advantage that nobody else has unless they're unless they're a believer but even then you are uniquely and wonderfully made that no one can fill your shoes and so now all of a sudden i can't lose for winning and i think when you change and renew our mind and we actually have the power of God, there's nothing we can't do. You know, we can't lose for winning. So to come back around to your boxing career, who, what boxer has been one of your inspirations in your life? Growing up, I you know, was watching HBO. 
And I mean, everybody everybody was watching HBO, you know, back when they were on. But it was Oscar De La Hoya. Oh I mean, yeah, I remember the Golden Boy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, I remember growing up. I had a picture of De La Hoya and Mike Tyson on the wall, dude. And it was, you know, uh, at the time, it was always like, which person do you want to be like? Yeah, my dad would say that. Which which one do you want to be like, De La Hoya or or Tyson? Yeah, both great fighters. But what kind Very of person different. do you want yeah. to be outside of the ring? Oh, it's kind of changed now because gotcha. Oscar's he, you know, he is who he is now, and man, great fighter. He's obviously a he's obviously a very smart guy as well. Yeah, you know, he's he's successful with his promotional company and every, company and everything. Um, but yeah, Oscar De La Hoya, man. He yeah, was, he was the golden boy. Like you, uh, <laughs> everybody wanted to be De La Hoya, man. What do you think about the fight with Jake Paul and Tyson? It's it's a money grab. Yeah. For sure. Um you know, all all the power to him and honestly like I I think Jake Paul's a, a really good dude. Yeah. It seems like he's a good guy. Uh just to even give Mike that opportunity to yeah. make make that bag again. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's kind of something else about Mike, man. And he's he's uh you you saw him crawl out of a huge hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he I know he owed a lot of money to people, I think the IRS and um, yeah, it's bad he was, for a while. He was really, I think. really overweight, and I'm just so happy to see him flourishing and doing well. Yeah, like he's the champ. And he, he he doesn't seem like the he doesn't seem like the killer he was when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, <he laughs> but he still looks out. like he got it. Oh yeah, yeah, he's he has it. But yeah, I think I think Jake will probably win or maybe even stop him. Uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, Father Time is. Is undefeated. Yeah, yeah. And I think Mike's almost sixty, so it's. I don't like the fight, but yeah. On the on the flip side, he's gonna get his get his bag. So, do you, do you think it's dangerous, like to put two different age groups like that together in the ring? I mean, I know Mike's still got a fighter's chance because he's he's Mike, and he is still got one of the most. I think he's like one of the most ten uh, out of ten the top 10 hardest hitters of all time. Sure. But age does play a factor, right? I mean, the body does break down after a while. And I th- power is the last thing to really to go for a fighter. Oh, okay. So you keep that power. I mean, if you have power, it, it's kind of the, just you're either born with it or you're not. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can do some strength things and this and that, but either you have power or you're not. And, uh, and he I, has to have that old man strength. <laughs> I just, I just I'm concerned about the the velocity, the speed on his punches anymore. Does he gotcha. Have, does he have any of that speed anymore? Um, because I mean, you could have this huge missile, man, and if you can't land it. Then you're what does yeah. It matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I know everyone. I know everyone wants to see Mike knock out Jake Paul, but <laughs> oh, everybody, I I would like to see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jake. Jake seems like a good guy, though. Like he, yeah. he's helped. He's helped a lot of guys. I mean, you can look at it. Look at Mayweather too. You know? Oh, that's right. Yeah, all the guys he's fought, even now doing exhibitions, he's helping these guys out. Yeah, you yeah. got to look at it that way. That's true. It's not that you know I'm going to get in there and you know beat this guy up for nothing. Like he's he's yeah. paying him good money and it changes people's lives. So that's true. Yeah, and then plus it's almost like that that uh, Rocky Balboa movie. You know the last the last fight that Rocky does. He's our, he's in the way he's like old. He's yeah, like in yeah. his fifties or something, <laughs> and he comes out to do the expedition. Yeah, it's it's almost like real life <laughs> Rocky Balboa. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike's back. He's fighting a twenty six year old. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what the? <laughs> hey, all I know is by the time I'm almost fifty. Yeah, I'm not getting in the ring with a twenty six year old. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, now tell me, do you think it's it's hard when you're competing? at that level to to turn it off you know what i mean is it is it hard to turn that off because winners win you know winners yeah like uh, i think of uh ricky bobby you know <laughs> he's and like first or last <laughs> winners win <laughs> i can do whatever the heck i want because i'm a winner <laughs> i've seen with a lot of guys it, it's hard to to stop yeah you know um i can't tell you what i'm gonna do yeah, you know when I'm, when I'm, when I hit that point, uh, I always say though, you know, if my wife tells me, hey, 
or even my trainer. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, your timing's a little off. You're getting hit too much. Then you know yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw, hang up the gloves. Yeah, yeah, hang yeah. them up. But uh, yeah, it's it's hard for a lot of fighters. They they want to keep going, especially you know when you're enticed by by that little money bag. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's that's really all you've been doing your whole life. So. Gotcha. Um. Yeah. I I'm looking at you know starting a business and you know oh, do, nice. doing doing something you know after boxing that way. Yeah. I don't want to be uh, a slave to the sport. I want to use the sport. Sport. Yeah. Sport uses me, so I'm gonna use the sport. Yeah. Yeah. So last question. After this fight, Caleb, I'm projecting you win. What happens next after that? We win. We're getting that interim WBA world title. Okay. That's that's for this fight. So I'm gonna be walking around with the title, and uh, man, then we can make some real big fights. Nah, it's gonna be, that's okay. It's gonna be good, man. Yeah, I'm super excited. I've been uh, training my whole life, training my whole life for this opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll get that interim world title, and then you know, hopefully, we'll look at some some way bigger fights with some of the big guys. You know, I know Canelo's fighting Berlanga. Uh huh. Um, I think I think he's he's gonna win. And he might stop him. I don't I don't know. We'll see. Berlanga has that puncher's chance, but you know, after that fight. Uh, I win convincingly on the 14th. Maybe we get Canelo. Um, oh, any, okay. Any of the top guys in the, in the division. Uh, I just I love to compete. I love the sport, mm-hmm. and I just want to show the world what I can do. Okay. You know. Yeah. Okay. So I lied. One more question. Okay. <laughs> With so we were just talking about Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. That has to be a dream fight. To be able to just even be in the ring with someone like Mike Tyson, right? Hypothetically, hypothetically, if you could be in the ring with any fighter, dead, alive, just just dream fight to be in the ring with someone in the stadium, who would it be? I would, I would like to experience the. I would like to experience prime Roy Jones Jr. Okay. Whether whether it be in a fight, whether we, you know, were to spar or whatever. I I I've always I've always had that competitive drive in me like, okay, yeah. I want to see how far my skills can go. Yeah. And Roy Jones Jr. obviously is <laughs> is uh he's a great he's I think he's one of the best ever. Yeah. In his prime, man. Like the dude you couldn't hit him. He's just too fast. And he not only was he fast, but he could knock you out. <laughs> yeah. Like cat like reflexes. Heck yeah. Crazy. I wish he would have retired after he beat uh Ruiz. Oh, okay, okay. And just right out into the sunset. Yeah. You know? Like that would have been so cool. And they would have just said, Man, this guy started at middleweight. Yeah. And went yeah. all the way up to heavyweight. That's crazy. And won titles in every single division all the way up. I think he may have skipped cruiserweight, but yeah crazy man roy jones there it is man so guys thank you guys for clicking on today's video don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification button and before we sign off man if there is a young kid out there watching right now what would be your word of inspiration to them god is good god is good and uh just keep working hard stay very stay disciplined in your life uh don't let distractions um you know sway you this side or this way follow the lord and uh i mean all else will follow there it is yeah. well thank you guys for watching and thank you brother for coming on the all pod. Right. thank you man appreciate it till next time we love you god loves you god bless